So about a month ago, I put together a video where I broke down five of the most powerful AI photography tools on the market. One of those tools stuck with me so much that I decided to put together a dedicated tutorial and review of the software, and that tool is Imagine AI, which is an AI-powered photo editing software that can learn your editing preferences and then automatically edit your pictures for you. Full disclaimer, yes, this is a sponsored video, but Imagine AI doesn't get to see it before I post it, and I very rarely recommend anything to my viewers unless I fully believe in it. So all of the opinions expressed in this video are my genuine thoughts on the product. The first half of this video will demonstrate how you can actually use Imagine AI to achieve automatic edits that you'll be happy with, and then the second half of this video will actually review some of the output so that you can see what I was getting out of the program. So let's jump in. When you first open up Imagine AI, you'll be able to select from two interfaces on the left-hand side, AI Profiles and Projects. Let's start by looking at the AI Profiles interface. If we click on this, we're going to be able to choose between Personal AI Profiles and and talent AI profiles. Personal AI profiles will allow us to create custom profiles based on our personal editing style. Talent AI profiles will allow us to choose from pre-existing profiles that have been prepared by other professional photographers with unique editing styles. Most of us are going to want to set up a personalized profile, so I'm going to focus on how we can do that. To set up a personal AI profile, click on create your own profile in the top right corner. We're presented with two options that can train the algorithm to understand your editing style, which are light personal AI profile and personal AI profile. Light personal AI profiles will create a profile based on a Lightroom preset. Personal AI profiles will create a profile based on 3,000 of your edits uploaded from a Lightroom catalog. Now, obviously, the better and the more accurate option is the personal AI profile, but understandably, many of us might not have 3,000 edits to upload, or we might have had an inconsistent editing style over the years, which will just confuse the algorithm. So to create a light personal AI profile, if we flip over to Lightroom, apply a set of edits to the picture, then click on the plus icon next to presets and choose create preset. Select all of the options that you want to include with the preset and then click create. Now when you return back to Imagine AI, we'll see that the preset is listed when you click on presets. That's pretty simple. Now let's have a look at the option that most of us will be interested in, which is the personal AI profile. If we select this option and choose next, we can choose the format type of our images. So in my case, that would be raw. Then we can choose whether the images are in color or black and white. Again, in my case, color and Finally, we're going to name the profile. Now that the profile has been created, we're going to indicate which types of pictures will be the most common. And the algorithm will use this information to more accurately fine tune the results. So in this case, we're going to select sports. Now we're going to select our Lightroom catalog because Imagine AI will pull our edits directly from here. The next step is a little bit time consuming. We're going to manually select the individual folders that we want to upload and include as part of this profile. I know this is pretty tedious, but you got to make sure you invest the time selecting the right picture pictures because it's going to impact the quality of your final output. Now that we've selected our 3,000 pictures, we hit upload, and now we wait. Over the course of the next 24 hours, Imagine AI will upload, analyze, and build a profile based on the images that we have selected. So now let me briefly show you how to set up a new project using the profile that we just created. I have here a set of basketball pictures in Lightroom that I've culled through and prepared for editing. So if we flip back to Imagine AI and click on projects on the left-hand side, then click on create a new project, we're going to select the most common types of pictures, which in this case, sports. Then we're going to select our Lightroom catalog. Then finally, select the folders we want to upload. We also have the ability to automatically crop and straighten our pictures as well. All we have to do is tick these boxes here on the left-hand side. Now, in my experience, the straightening feature works very well, especially for some of the real estate photography examples that I plan to show you later in this tutorial. But I like to crop my sports pictures very aggressively, and the algorithm looks to retain the entire subject in the frame. So for this example, I'm going to keep cropping and straightening straightening turned off. There's also a subject masking feature here on the left hand side, which will automatically detect the subject in your frame and apply additional edits specifically to them. Again, I want to keep this feature turned off because the subject masking feature isn't something I use very often, but great to know that the option is there. All right, let's start the processing. Now we can sit back and make ourselves a coffee. I've uploaded 130 pictures, so I'll come back in about 15 minutes and I can expect that the processing will be complete back with the coffee. So now let's have a look at these edits. We can see now that there are five stages of progression in Imagine AI, and we've already made our way through the first three, which are culling, reviewing, and editing. We're gonna talk about the last two stages a bit later, but for now, let's click on the download to review option on the right-hand side and have a look at what Imagine AI did for us. So if we open up Lightroom now that the download is complete, we can see under the history panel that Imagine AI has applied edits to our pictures, and we can effectively reverse those edits to compare a before and 
and after of what the algorithm has actually done. Let's have a look at a couple of examples and I'll share my opinion on how I think the algorithm did. So first you can see the original photo, then my edit, then the AI edited version. Here's another example, original photo first, then my edit, then the AI edited version. One more example, original photo first, then my edit, then the AI edited version. Overall, I thought the algorithm did a great job. For the most part, sports photography and photojournalism does not require a lot of processing, so this is pretty much exactly what I'd be looking for. Now, when we compare the AI edited versions to my personal edit, you can see that I prefer to expose and saturate the images a little bit more, but overall, the algorithm nailed my preferences when it came to clarity, highlights, shadows, and sharpening. Now, just to give you an idea for how the results would look different if I turned on cropping, straightening, and subject masking, I turned on all three options and then ran the images through the same processing again. And you'll quickly see why I turned off cropping and straightening the first time around, because again, I like to crop my sports pictures very aggressively. I'm not afraid to cut off arms and limbs to frame a shot. And understandably, as you can see, the algorithm wants to keep the majority of the subject in the frame. Again, I want to reiterate that these features can be very powerful in the right setting. But in this particular instance, I knew my lighting and I knew my subject matter and I preferred to keep it turned off. Now, I also want to give you guys some perspective on different types of images. So here's a set of real estate pictures that I processed with a different personal AI profile as well. And for these edits, I turned on cropping and straightening. First, you can see the original photo, then my edit, then the AI edited version. Here's another example, original photo first, then my edit, then the AI edited version. One more example, original photo first, then my edit, then the AI edited version. Now, once again, I found that the trend was similar. I preferred to expose and saturate the real estate pictures a little bit more, especially when it came to boosting the shadows. But overall, the algorithm did a good job of matching the overall look and feel of my edit. Additionally, we can see how much more powerful and effective that the automatic cropping and straightening tools become. With real estate, we want these vertical lines here to be as straight as possible in the frame, and we're not aggressively cropping our images. So the algorithm does a great job of fine tuning it. All of this goes to say that if I were in a situation where I didn't have time to edit my own pictures, I would feel pretty comfortable leaving the work to Imagine AI. Now, with all that said, our tutorial isn't completely over because the cool thing about Imagine AI is that the algorithm can fine tune itself based on any changes that we make to the edits we downloaded. So if I go through, adjust my shadows, contrast, whatever it might be, and then I head back into Imagine AI, I now have the ability to upload final edits here. This is a very important step because it allows Imagine AI to further improve the future results based on what you liked and didn't like. So if you found this tutorial helpful and you'd like to give it a shot for yourself, you can try out Imagine AI using my link in the description below, and this will give you 1500 free edits to run through the software. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to let me know in the comment section below. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more high value content just like this, and I'll see you in the next video.